there are four things that make a room a bedroom and then there's a fifth thing that is a myth and I want to tell you all about those things but the problem is I have a band-aid on my nose how awful to watch somebody talk with a band-aid on their nose I'm sorry if you're one of my regular people following I have a little bit of an update about why the band-aids on my nose you can continue to watch that and I have an update about my course called Section 8 Rental Mastery, Manage It Yourself, the Pat and Monique Method. If you wanna hear about that, keep watching. If you're like, just tell me what makes a room a room, fine, skip it. Go ahead, look at the chapters below and I get into the four things and the myth there. I had sun damage and they took a crater out of my face and yesterday I was getting a physical and just a regular yearly physical and the doctor is this young, well, she's a PA, she said, oh, can I just see under the Band-Aid? And I'm ready, as of today, I can be without a Band-Aid, the doctor, my dermatologist said. And I said, okay, yeah, sure. So I lifted it up and I showed it to her and this is what she did. She went, oh, so needless to say, I think I better keep wearing a Band-Aid because I don't need that reaction. And the reaction that I'm getting right now kind of cracks me up. When people talk to me, they do this a lot. They're like, I think it's subconscious, but, Kind of makes me laugh and then it distracts me because i'm like oh those that poor person they're trying not to think or talk about my band-aid because it's in your face about my course i had a meeting with someone today i explained to her all my glitches that are just you know there's special people that do this i gotta say if you want to invest in real estate especially in detroit you really need help and i just finally took my own advice and i went out there and i got help and I finally found somebody who would actually help me. So if you're looking to invest in Detroit, get my help as soon as she helps me, I can give you my course. And if you're interested in my course, the best way to get on my mailing list is you can email me and say, just get me on your mailing list. Or you can take my free offer, which is my section eight questionnaire that I give people when they call me and they want a rental. I have all these questions I ask them to narrow down before I even show them the house, if they're the right kind of applicant with their voucher. So let's get into the whole doors thing now that we got the band-aid out of the way. One thing that could be a myth, but I did not put this in my myth category, is size. So there's not an actual size. According to my inspector, and I called the city of Detroit inspector who also does Section 8 inspections, and by the way, he said whatever HUD says needs to happen in a house, HUD will overrule whatever your state or your municipality says. So you can look these up for your own state or municipality, but as far as he's concerned in the city of Detroit, he said it doesn't have to be a specific size. And the way that he looks at it, it just has to be livable as in a bedroom. Oh, you mean a cedar closet in one of these big old Detroit houses, they put in these really cool cedar closets and they have a window. So I'm like, okay, could I use that as a bedroom? Duh, no, that's not a bedroom, that's a closet. So you gotta be careful, there's some common sense that goes into all of this. Number two, windows slash egress. So every room has to have two points of egress and egress means a way to get out. So even if the window's kind of up high and it's not like the inspector is looking at you going, you weigh too much, there's no way you're getting out that window. <laughs> you know, you could, you could squeeze yourself out that window. And even if it's up high, even if the window is upstairs, there's gonna be an assumption that there's a ladder there that the fireman's gonna let you out. There just always has to be two forms of egress. When I looked this up, I did look this up on ChatGPT and it talked about ventilation. And my instructor's like, eh, no, it's more like you open the door and there's the ventilation. So there has to be a door and a window or two doors, but there has to be that egress, two points of egress. And that's why in basements, it doesn't work. Or it doesn't work if the windows, you can't just say windows, because what if they're all glass block? What if you got bought a house and someone's, oh, I like glass black, it's safer. No, it's not safer. What are you gonna do during a fire? You know how hard it is to open a glass black window? You can't, you gotta smash that thing out. And that's <laughs> no easy feat. That's why they put them in there so people don't break into the houses. Hold on, before I keep going, it helps me a lot if you like and subscribe. I love your comments. If you wanna add to what I'm saying, take away from what I'm saying. I'm not an inspector, I'm not an appraiser. You're welcome to comment below. And I wanted to say too, I have houses for sale in Detroit. I have turnkey rentals. We buy houses ourselves, we renovate them, and we place the tenant and we sell you the houses. So definitely email me about that, get on my exclusive buyer list, or check out my website. I 
as of right now, it's updated what I have for sale. Number three is ceiling height. So there is some state code about it and I should have looked it up before I started making this video, but you're all in different states. You can just go ahead and Google it. What is my state code as far as ceiling height? And my inspector said off the top of his head, don't quote me, he said, so I'm quoting him, kinda, was eight feet. Look it up wherever you are, and then whatever HUD says, it's that rule, but you're safe if you're at least eight feet, okay? Number four is privacy. And it did just come up for me that I have a four bedroom house but one of the rooms is what I call a walkthrough room. And that is not considered privacy. There was an addition on the back of the house and I thought, well, that that's a bedroom. It's got a closet. It's got two forms of egress. It's got a window, but you can't call that a bedroom because there's no privacy. Somebody has to walk through that room to get to the addition on the back bedroom. So that is such a bummer. But when you list your house and tenants are gonna see it, you could, say it's four bedrooms even though you can't technically call it that so as far as your voucher works with section eight okay no that's three bedrooms don't try to be calling that a four bedroom if somebody came to you with a four bedroom voucher now you're put down to the three bedroom voucher size so that's you got to be careful with that and what is the myth this one i hear this all the time what makes a bedroom a bedroom is a closet right wrong that does not make a bedroom a bedroom because you have to think about when they started originally building these million dollar homes everybody had wardrobes they didn't have closets even they even if they weren't million dollar homes there's lots of rooms that don't have closets but they have the two forms of egress you're not doing this to climb <laughs> to go in the room like a, some kind of normal ceiling height it's obviously a room it's not someone's cedar closet but it doesn't have a closet well that wouldn't make it not a bedroom common sense right so that's the one that's a myth thank you so much for watching comment below did i miss anything because i'm not an inspector i'm not an appraiser let me know what you think